what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out the all new ASRock AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX now this is a card I've been waiting on for a little while and I did wait on it just a bit because I knew that ASRock was going to release a white version and we finally have it here with their Tai Chi variant and this thing is an absolute monster this is kind of a two-part video. In this first video, we're going to do an unboxing. We're going to test it out with Windows, but one of the main reasons I wanted to pick this up was for Linux gaming. We've got the most powerful AMD Radeon GPU on the market right here, and this thing definitely puts out some amazing performance. We've got all the bells and whistles with this 7900 XT. It's got a full metal chassis, dual BIOS, triple fan, beefy boy heatsink here, and 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And one of my favorite things here is just the overall aesthetic of the white Tai Chi variant. It uses the Tai Chi 3 fan cooling system. It's got polychrome RGB sync, ARGB backplate, reinforced metal frame. Like I mentioned, we've got a dual BIOS. We can go quiet or performance on the fly just by flipping a switch. It utilizes PCIe 4.0. We've got that 24 gigabytes of GDDR6, and it's a 384-bit memory bus. This thing is definitely a quick card. 96 megabytes of AMD Infinity Cache, 96 RDNA 3 compute units, 6,144 stream processors. Uh, yeah, I mean, this thing can definitely get some gaming out of the way. Three display ports. They're 2.1 around back. We've also got one HDMI 2.1. And to power this bad boy, you will need three 8-pin power connectors. They recommend at least a 1,000-watt power supply for this unit. And luckily, AMD hasn't swapped over to a proprietary power connector just yet. Not sure if they will in the future. But this does make it really easy to use your power supply that you already have, given that it does support enough wattage. And because this card is a chunky boy, it does utilize three slots in your case. Now, I'm going to be putting this in a rig that I previously built. I didn't have a super powerful GPU in this, but it definitely deserved it. And as you can see, once I slam that card in here, I mean, it definitely goes very well. That white on black looks really good in my opinion. And for the CPU, I actually have the 13th Gen i5 13600K. And that's placed inside of an ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Carrera motherboard. Actually, one of my favorites right now. It works out really well for anything that I've thrown at it. I've got 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury DDR5 running at 6800 megahertz and a 2 terabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD. Like I mentioned, we're going to be running Windows in this, so I've got Windows 11 Pro installed. I want to run some benchmarks and test out some gaming on this GPU. But in the future, if you're interested, I will be doing a Linux video. We're going to be testing out SteamOS 3 with this setup here, and I may swap over to a whole nother CPU setup with this same GPU. Kind of wanted to keep it all AMD, but I already had this ready to go. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some gaming. Then we'll take a look at some benchmarks and uh, definitely test out some more games because that's what this thing's all about. So first up, we've got one of my favorite games, Forza Horizon 5, 4K Extreme. I mean, so we're maxed out here. I've got a 144 Hz 4K display. And as you can see, I mean, we're at 144 Hz with this maxed out at 4K. I completely understand that this is a very well optimized game, but once you start going over from uh, Ultra to Extreme, it does give some of the best PCs a run for its money. Right here, I mean, we're not having an issue at all, and if you take a look at the wattage that this GPU is pulling in Afterburner, it's sucking down 403 watts right now, but uh, the temps on this are absolutely amazing. Now, I do have the side panel off of the case, but with this triple fan Tai Chi cooler, it can keep this really chilly. Next thing I wanted to do is just take a look at some benchmarks here. First up, we've got 3D Mark Firestrike, 47,531. Time Spy gives a very impressive 27,321. And the last one I ran here was the uh, 3D Mark DirectX Ray Tracing Feature Test, 52.77 FPS. So in synthetics, I mean, this thing is knocking it out of the park, but we've got some more games to test here. And the next one on the list is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I personally like using the built-in benchmark. It just goes through everything that you can basically go through in the game. We're at Ultra Settings, 4K, no FSR. We didn't need any kind of scaling here. And by the end, we had an average of 121 FPS and a low of 60. I think we could do a little better here with a bit of overclocking on this 7900 XTX. 
Ever since God of War was released for PC, we know that it does take a pretty powerful GPU to get this to run at 4K Ultra, but with this, we're getting an average of 114 FPS, 4K Ultra, no FSR at all. This is some great performance, and you know, paired up with this i5-13600K, I think it's doing a really great job. Spider-Man Miles Morales 4K Ultra, we got an average of 122 FPS, but every once in a while you'll see it drop down into the 90s. Now I'm not complaining whatsoever. This is another one of those games that, you know, does require a pretty beefy GPU, and with the 7900 XTX at 4K maxed out, not a problem to run this at full speed. And of course, when you pair this up with a 3Sync monitor, it just makes everything so much better. With The Last of Us Part 1, I was really impressed with the performance, but keep in mind, I do have FSR set to quality. So we're at Ultra, we're at 4K, FSR at quality, and even with FSR off, it is over 60, but we're kind of right there on the edge. I was getting an average of 67 with no FSR. So with it set up at quality, we can get an average of 89. And it really doesn't take away from the game. It still looks really great. And of course, we had to test out some ray tracing with Cyberpunk 2077. I've got it set up right now at 4K, we're at Ray Tracing Ultra. And as you can see from Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, we're right under 60. I mean, this is maxing out the 7900 XTX. But to tell you the truth, I don't mind playing this, you know, at Ray Tracing Medium or even 1440p Ray Tracing Ultra. When I play this game on my main rig, which uh, does have a more powerful GPU, I don't even turn ray tracing on, I just go to ultra. It's not kind of my thing, I mean it does look great, but I could definitely live without it. But some people love ray tracing, so let's see what it does at ray tracing medium. And now we're over that 60 mark. Not by much, but I mean we're right there on the edge. And uh, since it sets FSR to auto, I think it's kind of adjusting it so we don't go under 60 with this. It looks amazing. V-Sync turned on would kind of be the way to go. But as we know, they did go crazy with ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077. So we've got an even higher setting than Ultra. And that's going to be the overdrive setting. Overdrive ray tracing really does work this whole system. We're at an average of 20 FPS in overdrive mode with Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K. So we can do one more thing here. We could go down to 1080p. But I'm going to see what it does at 1440p. And to tell you the truth, I don't think it's going to help out tremendously. We're probably not going to go over 60 with overdrive on with the 7900 XT even at 1440p. And that's just based on what we saw with 4K. Yeah, so... We're getting an average of around 32 FPS, 1440p, ray tracing overdrive with Cyberpunk 2077. There's one last setting that I wanted to test here, and that's just going to be at 1440p ray tracing ultra because we already tested it at 4K. I know uh, 1440p monitors are kind of a dime a dozen now, and going up to 4K can still be quite expensive. So I wanted to see what we got here. And now, with it set up like this, we can get an average of 74 FPS. 1440p Ray Tracing Ultra on the 7900 XTX. I know not a lot of people are going to be buying this card specifically for this game, but it's still my favorite game of all time. We've got OG Skyrim maxed out at 4K, and we can run this at 144Hz. I personally just tested this, I wasn't even going to throw it in, but uh, you know there are people out there that still play this game, like myself, and I figured I'd go ahead and show it off. And I do prefer the OG version of Skyrim, but over 60 hertz, we get a lot of wonky stuff going on without any mods. So overall, yeah, really loving this card for Windows, but like I mentioned, one of the main reasons I wanted to pick it up was for Linux gaming. As a lot of us already know, when it comes to AMD drivers and Linux, they kind of do go hand in hand with those Mesa drivers. And I will have a video coming up very soon, and I will have a video coming up very soon, but I'd like to know, should I keep the Intel CPU or just swap over to a whole system dedicated to AMD? I could go with the 7000 series AMD CPU on this setup. Uh, let me know if you want to see it with Intel or AMD. Either way, I think it's going to be an amazing performer, especially running something like SteamOS 3. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the ASRock AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX Tai Chi Edition. 
If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to ASRock's website. And I do want to give AMD and ASRock a big shout out for sending this over for review. Couldn't do it without them. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.